have you as our guest on tonight's webinar. Um, it's titled Banking and Career Series, Transitioning into Business Analysis. And for all our participants, all our attendees tonight, we would like you to know that this is the first of many career series that will be coming your way. And it is sponsored by the Chartered Institute of Bankers of Nigeria, CIBN, the Canada branch, um, ably led by her president, Mary Aino. The CIBN Canada branch executives came together a while ago to put this vision in place with the goal of helping Nigerian immigrants already in Canada or intending with informative and insightful ideas on the many career options open to them in Canada. We are aware of the many people who are currently at crossroads about navigating the career or employment market in Canada. If you fall into that category, then know that tonight's webinar is absolutely for you. And just like tonight, our intention is to bring experts from various career paths, ranging from business analysis, project management, compliance, database science, amongst others, to come share both their professional knowledge and personal experiences on how they have been able to successfully navigate through. I would like all our participants to know as well tonight that you will have the opportunity to ask your questions. Um, for us tonight, we'll be taking the Q&A session, we'll be taking at the end of the session, and we intend doing it in such an orderly manner. So what I want to advise everyone is if you have your questions, please, you can type in your questions. If you're using your mobile phones, you're going to see the question option. Just click on it and type in your questions or you can raise your hands. You click the raise your hands option on, on the computer if you're using a laptop or something. And then we'll be able to also take your questions. We will start off first with those who are typing in their questions and then we'll take those who have their hands raised. And please, uh, just before I go ahead to introduce our guest tonight, I would also like to know amongst our attendees who, for those who are currently members of CIBN, uh, whether in Nigeria or here in Canada, please, um, a poll will be popping up right now. And all you need to do for me is please click on that poll as applicable. So whether it's a yes or no, um, just click on it, just to give us a fair idea of how many persons in Canada are currently um, members of our branch. The poll is going to last for 30 seconds, after which I'll go ahead to introduce our very wonderful guest tonight. Um, uh, please go ahead and just click as applicable um, where our time is running. Like I said, we have 30 minutes for uh, this poll. And for everyone that have logged in tonight, I can assure you, you are in for an exciting time um, because it, it promises to be very, very insightful and informative. And without with, uh, wasting much time, I'd like to introduce our guest tonight. Um, our guest tonight is a banking solution consultant. He has over 25 years experience in the implementation of core banking solutions. He has consulted for several financial institutions across Africa, Europe, and North America. And at the moment, he is currently um, based in the United States, where he's also consulting for um, top level companies. And like many of us here in Canada or those intending, he was at one time a new immigrant to this country, and he's been able to transverse the the whole employment market, and he's been able to carve a niche for himself. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, everyone participating tonight, please help me make welcome um, Mr. Sam Adiremi. He also doubles as the vice president or the vice chairman of CIBN Canada branch. Thank you very much. It promises to be insightful. Please pay attention. Mr. Sam, over to you. Thank you so much, um, Jacob, for that um, wonderful introduction. Uh, welcome to everyone. I'm so excited to be here tonight. I'd like to uh, first and foremost uh, thank uh, the 
the executive of uh, the shadows of Bangalore, Nigeria, uh, for giving me the platform to share my personal experience in this space. So what we're going to be doing tonight is basically just giving an insight into what is actually happening in the market space. In the market space, we're going to be looking at uh, the land and the banking space. We're going to be looking at uh, the technology space, and we're going to look looking at uh, business analysis. How business analysis actually helps so many people, you know, um, to to get a new good, I mean, a new op op opportunity. But before I go into all of that. I'd like to quickly just introduce myself, um, just to add to whatever, I mean, what uh, Jacob has just uh, said. I want to say that I've uh, been in the business analysis uh, space for the past 25 years. I've been there even when business analysis was not officially, you know, uh, recognized. I uh, want to share this as uh, simple stories. So maybe that's, that's going to help us to have a fair understanding of uh, where I'm coming from. Many years ago, about 25 years ago, I was um, I was hired as a system administrator in a bank, and um, I was given the first responsibility of uh, reconciling the, the financial statements. Apparently, I know absolutely nothing about uh, banking. I don't know anything about debit and credit, and uh, the responsibility was upon me to, you know, find the difference in the balance sheet. I went to. Uh, to finance department to ask for them to explain to me what uh, you know credit and debit is all about but nobody could actually explain all of that to me then they said the problem the difference that i have on the balance sheet is essentially an it problem that i need to go back to it department and solve the problem so that was when i i started my journey <laughs> of a business analysis i have to dig deep into the computer system to find where the difference was and at the end of the day i was able to resolve it but i said to myself for how long will i be dealing with all this kind of a situation where you are dealing with people who don't understand your language you are speaking to final departments you don't understand it language and it departments don't seem to understand the finance finance language so i embark on the journey of going for a formal training in banking with the shadow of bank of nigeria I enrolled for the part one of the CIBN you know, examination. And I tell you at the end of a part one, section one of the Institute examination, I was a completely transformed person. I started working as a go between the business and uh, IT department. I now understood finance and banking even better than um, many bankers. So that was the that was the beginning of the journey. I never I never I never, I never knew that uh, I was ever actually embarking on a journey called business analysis journey until when I traveled out of the country. In 2009, I came in contact with uh, business analysis and I said, "What's business analysis in the first place?" Because there's something there's, there was something like that. And on close examination, reviewing the curriculum and uh, looking at uh, what this uh, subject was all about, and I found that this is what I've been doing for the past uh, 10, 15 years at that time. And here I am today, after all of um, that experience and uh, training, coming back to the same point, seeing myself working as a go between the business and, um, and technology folks. So tonight, what I would like to just uh, let you just let you into is um, I have the agenda set here. What I would like to do essentially is to walk you through what we have been doing in banking by looking at the banking space, walk you through some of the development that is taking place in banking, then move on to look at what is in IT space, all the development that is taking place in the past few years, then look at the business analysis lands landscape, and after that, I'll give you a little bit of an insight into you know what business analysis is all about by providing an overview of what business analysis is all about then at the end of the day or uh, towards the end i will be providing some um, some insight on how you can actually transition from whatever you do right now but the focus is on the bankers so how you can transition you know from banking into business analysis so the playing field is uh, banking we have uh, three players 
let's just assume just pretend to be we have only three, three group of people that are actually operating in, the, in this in, in the industry we have the bankers we have technology folks and we have business analysis within the banking space many of us can actually can actually relate with um, the different department that we have in the bank banking operations and treasury operations lending operations investment and deposits finance and account department trade finance marketing operations customer relationship management you know private banking and wealth management what i just want to let you know is that there is no any difference between banking back in nigeria or any part of the world and a banking in this country the banking business is about intimidation between the deficit and the surplus sector of the economy what we do as bankers is essentially you know develop products and these products is what we use in actually attracting funds from uh, the depositors and uh, we use the same product to actually give money out the difference between what we what we what we took from a uh, customer and what we are giving out is uh, is how we make our i mean make our profit so what i'm just trying to let you know you know, in advance is the fact that uh, you already have an experience which is relevant in the business analysis space. So your experience in banking operation, your experience in treasury operation, your experience in lending and uh, lending operations, your experience in the uh, credit, your experience in the uh, finance or trade finance, all of these are very, very relevant. But uh, one thing I wanted to just quickly bear in mind is the fact that um, banking business actually change all over you know over a period of time in today in today's world we the emphasis is on the digital banking where you don't have to walk into any brick and mortar organization to make your deposit or you know withdraw money many of us have not traveled to any bank now look at what is happening during this pandemic we are locked down in our houses yet we are still doing some transactions we are moving money from one account to another account. We are transacting business. We are doing those all over the entire place. So all of these experiences are very, very relevant to working as a business analyst. So focus as far as the department are concerned, what we are looking at is we are looking at uh, what you do in terms of the processes. What are the processes that are involved in banking operations? What are the processes that are involved in treasury operations? What are the processes that are involved in lending operations? What are the processes that are involved in investment? What has actually happened, you know, what has actually happened in the past few years in terms of the way these are actually executed? That is what we're going to be looking at even uh, through the whole of this session. Now let's look at the technology space. We're all aware of uh, what is actually going on at the moment. A few years ago, maybe about 10, 15 years ago, uh, many people are, are skeptical about um, the dot com. Um, not many people are actually sure if um, there would be anything like an e commerce. We just thought, okay, maybe this thing will just uh, come and we'll just go. But today, the reality is that um, IT is actually taking over everything, it's taking over banking, and we need to be aware of this. There have been several development in the technology. In today's world, we talk about agile software development. In the past, we used to talk about the traditional, you know, coding. Many banks who have IT department that has, I mean, that have um, a whole bunch of guys that are actually coding. In but in today's world, we don't do that much of that. We have agile software development. We now have enterprise resource planning applications being run in different organizations, and banking business is not an exception. We don't have infrastructure that's against what we need to call hardware, infrastructure management, business process reengineering, cloud computing. Today, most organizations are actually moving to the cloud. Most organizations are moving to the cloud. They are buying services. You're having things like a you know, platform as a service. We're having you know, software as a service. We're having infrastructure as a service. All of these are things that most organizations use to spend a lot of money you know, acquiring and um, keeping within their premises. But all of these are moving to the cloud. And a traditional banker need to be aware of what's actually happening. Even for strategy reasons, we need to be aware of this. E-commerce has come to, come to stay. Statistics has shown that uh, more than 70 billion transactions happen on a daily, I mean, on a daily basis, on the internet. 
if you're not doing e-commerce, you are actually you're actually missing out on a, a, you know a, a lot of a, a lot of a great deals that's out there. IT project management is now the order of the day. Quality assurance is out there. Many of all these we are not you know they're not things that we are very familiar with many many years ago. You know, in IT department, I remember starting out as an IT person in the department. We don't have anything like a quality assurance. The system manager is responsible for everything that is happening in the, in, the, in the department. But in today's world, especially in this part of the world, we have quality assurance. These are things that we really need to be aware of. There's been so much changes that are taking place in technology's landscape. Therefore, this seminar is essentially to expose all of us to make us be aware of what's actually happening out there so that we can take advantage or get ourselves prepared if we're not there already. The other thing is issue of analytics. There have been aggressive development in analytics, analytics, machine learning, artificial intelligence, and data analytics. In today's world, we saw what happened in the case of a US election. There are so many things, I mean, there, there, there see a lot of things that are actually going on all around the world. Business intelligence is taking over the whole place. Artificial intelligence is something that has become order of the day. These are things that we really, don't, we really need to be, be, be bear in mind. Why am I bringing all of this, um, you know, in this uh, conversation? Because a BA essentially, the primary job of a BA is to work as a go between the business and the solution provider. Therefore, if you don't have an understanding of uh, the, the solution that's out there, and you don't have an understanding of the business, it's going to be very difficult for you to do an effective job as a, as a business analyst. Now, I'll call it the new paradigm because of all these changes that's taking place in the in the market space, in technology, and in the, in business. There are new skill sets required by different organizations by business. We call it uh, the new paradigm. With this massive shift in technology, there are new skills in demand. This includes, but not limited to, business analysis, solution architect, business intelligence analyst, data analytics and IT audit, technical writers, consultant. All of these are new skills that are in high demand even in the market today. But our focus is going to be on a business analyst. We're going to be looking at uh, what data analysis is all about. We're going to be looking at uh, people that actually qualify or current type job titles or designations that qualify, you know, to be described as a business analyst. I have on my screen here a list of a few job titles that can easily be transitioned or that can actually be described as a business analyst. One, business, an business architect. A business architect in organization are the one that are responsible for you know, looking at uh, the interconnection between the different departments, the different business processes within the organization. A business system analyst, this is the shift that we have, you know, as a result of, uh, as a result of um, um, business analysis. In the past, we used to have a system analyst, but with the introduction of a business analysis, there is now a variant. So anyone that is described as business analyst can actually be a BA. A data analyst can be a BA. An enterprise analyst can be a, be a management consultant, depending on what you do in the organization, whether you're a management, a management, uh, a management accountant or financial accountant, or you know, whatever consult, um, consultancy that you are providing to the organization, that can actually be transitioned or be taken as a BA uh, role. A product manager or product owner or equipment engineer or system manager, all of these are qualifying BA job titles that has been endowed by IIBA, that when you train as a BA, or if you are in this, in any of this capacity in the past, that as soon as you train as a BA, you can actually, you can easily redescribe yourself because you have actually performed, you know, some of the roles of a BA, even without you knowing that you're actually doing a BA, BA job. So what I'm just going to do now is just move on to just give you an overview of what business analysis is all about. Uh, we provided with some working definition. Uh, this is provided by the IBA. IBA gave us a definition. So business analysis is the process of enabling change in an organization by defining needs and a recommended solution that deliver value to the stakeholders. Well, this practice includes, but not limited to what? Using a set of a task, knowledge, and techniques used to work as a lazy person among stakeholders in order to do what? To understand the structure, policies, and operation of an organization, and to 
recommend solutions that enable the organization to achieve its objective. The, the key point here is that uh, a business analysis is nothing more than a go between the business and the solution provider. You are a lazy person. You work with different stakeholders to have an understanding of uh, the business requirement, the business need, with the hope or with the view of providing a solution to the business. And this solution often includes what? System development component, but may also consist of a process improvement or organizational change. So whenever we talk about the providing a solution, we are talking about the providing IT solution. Please note that uh, when we are talking about business analysis, we are not talking about um, you know, core analysis of a financial statement or analysis of a strategy in the organization. We are thinking about uh, automating, you know, business processes within the organization. We are thinking about uh, how we can actually bring about some changes in organization by bringing computer systems, by automating the process. That is what we are actually focusing on here. In other words, business analysis is actually a subset of, uh, is a new discipline in IIT. If you if you like to if you like to understand that, so by by extension, I want to say that the business analyst is uh, someone who studies the problems and needs of a business to determine how people, process, data, communication, and technology can best accomplish improvements to the to the business. In other words, for you to be a competent uh, business analyst, you are expected to have to have a fair understanding or a good understanding of both business and computing. We're not saying that uh, you must be a computer graduate. No. What we're saying is that uh, you should be able to speak their language. Whoever, whoever is going to be a lesson person among stakeholders must have an understand, a fair understanding of uh, this stakeholder's language. In other words, if you are to, if you're going to be an interpreter between two people, it is fair for all to say that uh, you should be able to, you should understand the language of the two people. Otherwise, it doesn't make any sense. You will not be able to, you will not be able to do any interpretation. A business analyst is someone responsible for captioning, say efficient captioning of data from the business source and the flow of the data to the computer system and the flow of a useful and timely information to the business. That is what we are supposed to be doing. I always tell people that uh, a, a business analyst is to a project, is to a project as a midwife is to a child delivery. The business analyst is there at the very conception of the project. The business analyst will be there throughout the entire life of the project up to go life of the project. So the question therefore is, um, why do we need a BA? Of course, it's to solve people and um, solve organization problems. And in solving these organization problems, we go into analyzing business needs. We look at the possible solutions, you know, for solving the problems of the organization or for moving the organization from whatever position they are to the next position. We are equally, we need the business analyst to provide support to the business. Remember, the business analyst was there at the very conception of the project. The business analyst was the one that actually gathered the requirement, it was the one that actually articulated the business requirement document. It was the one that worked with the solution provider. It was the one that worked with the testers. It would be the one that will work with any other members of the project team to ensure that the solution is actually meet, I mean, it's actually delivered according to the articulated business, business requirement. It therefore makes logical sense for him to be the person that will be there to provide more support to the business, even at Go Live. Now let's look at how this you know, transformed. The evolution base for all that we're talking about is the core project. So anytime we talk about, uh, anytime we think about business analysis, we are thinking about a project. You cannot write an effective resume. You cannot write, you cannot claim to be a business analyst without having a fair understanding of what project is all about. Without knowing the different phases of a project, it is almost in, nobody will ever believe whatever you are saying. Okay, so I'm just going to walk you through, you know, the project life cycle for the purpose of understanding what is involved or what you are trying to step into working as a BA. The starting point usually in a project cycle is uh, the project initiation. That is when the project has been commissioned. Once the project is commissioned, 
then you hire a project manager. The project manager will be the one that will hire the BA. The primary job of a BA is essentially to articulate the requirement. And what does that mean? The BA will work with the different stakeholders, especially the subject matter experts, to elicit the requirement, to make a determination what the business actually will want the solution to provide for them. That is uh, the next phase in the project life cycle. And the next is uh, analysis and design. The analysis and design, this is where the developers or the system analysts will take over, will take the output of the, of the BA, which was delivered at uh, the requirement phase and translate it to a system requirement specification. And this same document that will be given to the developer who will write the code and upon completing the code, a solution is gonna be implemented. The implementation will always come in the form of an installation, in form of um, you know providing training, you know in form of uh, data conversion, and um, and documenting whatever has taken place. The last but not the least is testing. Please, what I'm just giving you here is just a generic uh, you know life cycle. Uh, there will be several variants of uh, this life cycle depending on uh, methodology we are looking at. Look, looking looking at. Uh, we, we can't go into all of that, but there are several types of a methodology that we use in the living project. But these are basically, you know, the different phases that the project is expected to go through in order to, in order to deliver what the business wants. Now, working as a BA, it's very important for you to know the people that are going to be working with. I've just mentioned a few of them, but uh, let's have an understanding of uh, what they are actually delivering. What is a project manager delivering. At initiation, the project manager is essentially responsible for, for planning the project. Of course, it's going to be doing some other things, but the primary thing that is actually de developing is the project plan. Then, the second phase of the system development life cycle is data gathering and analysis. And who is responsible for this? Business analyst. He is responsible, is primarily responsible for that and for gathering requirements, for validating requirements for determining which requirement is relevant, which is not relevant. And at the end of the day, it has a deliverable. The deliverable for this business analysis is called business requirement documents. That is the primary you know, deliverable. The next phase is a design system specification. The system analyst is responsible for delivering system requirement specification. Please remember, in this table, what we are looking at is that um, the output, the output from one phase is the input for the, to the next phase. So the output from um, business analysis is business requirement document, and this document is what is translated to a system requirement specification. And this is oftentimes completed by a system analyst. Again, please note, it is possible for a system analyst to become a business analyst as well. And those are some of the changes that's actually taking place in the marketplace or especially with their projects. The next phase is implementation. Please note, the implementation phase um, will have several descriptions. You know, it could be called a functional, people that are actually working in that space could be called functional consultants or technical consultants. You know, they could be developers, but uh, for the purpose of uh, this presentation, just say, uh, let's take uh, implementation to mean a functional consultant or a technical consultant. The next phase is a testing. And the main deliverable for testing is a testing plan and test cases. And who is responding for that is tester. After that, we are thinking about going live. And who is primarily responsible for the go live? Until we get a go ahead from the end user through a user acceptance testing, there's nothing like a go live. So upon uh, getting, a sig getting the signal from the end users, then we'll move on to, to go live. And that is the end of the project. Whatever happened after the, after the, after the go live, they are called post implementation. You know, it could be post implementation support, or it could be post implementation review, it could be post implementation audit, whatever we want to call it. But in a nutshell, this is what a project life cycle looks like. So, and as a BA, I've just highlighted in red, you know, where you are actually, what you are actually delivering, you know, in the project. Now let's quickly look at what's the building block. 
there have been several schools of thought about what business analysis is all about. But uh, this is my this is my understanding from my 25 years of uh, working as a BA, technically. There are three building blocks. There is domain area. I mean, there is a domain area which I call the business. There is the framework where you work as a business analyst, and there is technology. It's almost impossible for you to claim to be a BA without having a firm grasp of uh, these three domain areas. The three of them work hand in hand. Let's look at what is in business. The only reason why we are actually why we are actually hired as a BA is because uh, the business has a problem, you know, to solve. What problem is the business trying to solve? It could be the problem of uh, inefficiency. It could be a problem of um, waste. It could be a problem of uh, you know profitability. It could be it could be any problem. It could be that uh, the business want to move to a new space, you know, uh, changing the business models trying to move from brick and mortar to dot com business or trying to go to the cloud. You know, there are several types of, uh, you know, problems that organization may want to solve out there. So, during feasibility study, the business will have come to a conclusion or a temporary, con a, 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 what I would call a temporary decision, you know, subject to some further validation of what they need to do in order to solve the problems. Some of the potential solutions could be maybe an introduction of business intelligence solution. It could be an introduction of a business process management solution. It could be an introduction of an e-commerce solution. It could be that they need to automate their budgeting system or planning system. Once this is actually concluded, the next thing we're doing is we have a project in our hands. As a business analyst, working as a go between these two people, these two group of people, you are equipped with a lot of uh, tools and a framework to enable you to work effectively. To work effectively as a BA. And uh, what we leverage as BA is what I call, uh, we use the IIBA framework. And what I have on the screen here to just give us an understanding of uh, what framework is all about here is uh, the knowledge areas. There are six main knowledge areas as far as the BA, BA is concerned. Strategy analysis and decision and collaboration, you know, requirement life cycle management, uh, requirement analysis and design definition, solution evaluation, and then planning and monitoring. I'm not going to be going to all of the detailed explanation of what each of all of this is all about, but let me just give you an idea of what we are looking at here. Under strategy analysis, this is where you establish this is where you establish the current state of the organization. This is where you make a determination where the organization, you know, the, the future model of the of uh, of the organization, what can, how, how how is the organization planning to solve the problem they are currently got? All of that uh, is established on that strategy analysis. In a decision and collaboration, this is where you work with the business to elicit the requirement, you know, to articulate your requirement, to validate what requirements are relevant, and um, moving on to requirement life cycle. Requirement life cycle is where you identify the requirement and trade the requirements up to the point is approved, you know, for inclusion in the business requirement document. So I'm not going to go into all of that details, but uh, just bear in mind, as a BA, you have the framework for working as a go between the business and uh, the solution provider. So the solution provider here, we're talking about technology. And technology, broadly speaking, we are looking at a uh, hardware, software, and uh, communication. Okay. Now, let me quickly explain, you know, expand more on the business side. Remember, you are a go between the business and uh, the solution provider. As a banker, you already have, you have banking processes in your pocket, so to say. In other words, you have a prime grasp of uh, the different business processes in the banking in the bank, banking arena, like lending. You have an understanding of uh, the, the entire life cycle of uh, lending, from a uh, loan creation to, you know, closing a loan. You know, you have an understanding of uh, the operation from opening an account and uh, closing the account. And you have a firm understanding of uh, the different uh, products that's available in the, in the investment, uh, you know, um, investment space, you know, from a TFSA to RSP to RIF. And in capital market, you have all of these things. Please, for a minute, just think, how many of us are still, you know, um, processing or use, I mean, carrying out any of this operation manually? I doubt if there's any one of us. The truth of the matter is that uh, we are using some form of uh, 
either full automation or semi automation systems to help us perform all of these tasks. So you already have a firm understanding of the business itself. You know the entire life cycle of an account, our account is, you know, is open and closed. You have a firm understanding of what happened in the in HR space, for example, from recruitment and it to the time of terminating the employment of an individual. So you have a, a good a good grasp of all of this. So you have that in your pocket. You don't need any education on that one. But it's a pretty good side for you to work effectively as a BA. Let's move on to the framework, giving it more details. The knowledge, the system that you see the audio interplay. The entrance, how do we get into this space is by having a project in hand. I talk about um, maybe when an organization has done a sports analysis, it comes with a decision that uh, in order to avert a particular threat, maybe they need to introduce a particular technology. And that will be subject to all of this framework. That's where I'm going to walk through the strategy analysis understand where the organization is and try to understand where the organization is going. Walk through a decision collaboration, requirement life cycle, cycle management, requirement analysis and definitions and a solution evaluation. This is the framework that we use in working as a BA, end to end, so to say. Now on the IT space, this has always been a, a form of a nightmare for so many people. There are many folks that want to be in BA, they don't have any IT background. And the question oftentimes is, uh, what do I need to know in um, IT? Like I said at the very beginning, if you are gonna be an interpreter between two people, you need to have a fair understanding of, uh, I mean, you need to have, you need to be able to speak the language of the two people. You may not be very, very fluent, but at least you have an understanding of uh, the two languages. And that's exactly what uh, we're trying to, you know, uh, demonstrate here. IT landscape is a very, it's like a jungle, to be honest with you. There are so many terminology out there. There are so many things that's out there that people don't even have an understanding of uh, where they, what they do. So what I'm trying to just project to you here is highlighting where most BA are expected to work. Although in today's market, a BA can work in any of the areas. You can have a BA, working in networking and communication, a BA working in, um, you know, in a um, database, you have a BA working in um, some other solution. But the focus is on application side, because application is nothing more than a tool that you use in, in uh, carrying out your data processing. So when you are working as a BA, it is very important for you to have an understanding of the kind of technology that's going to help you achieve your objective. It's very, very important for you to know how those solutions that you have identified will help the business in solving the problem that have been identified or the problem that's at hand. Okay, what are the competencies? What skill do you need to work as a BA? The first and the most important thing is personal quality, you must have capacity to capacity for imagination, conceptualization, and communication. Communication skills should be very good. The next one is the business knowledge. You need to have a firm understanding of a domain knowledge, including product development and process and business processes. The business processes, we just emphasize it. You have a firm understanding of a business processes in banking. You have a firm understanding of business processes in finance or in accounting, depending on the, which area that you work, okay? The next one is the IT system knowledge. You need to have an understanding of a different, you know, system, I mean, um, System component, including um, how all the system are, you know, fit together in terms of a functional architecture or software technology. So just have a good understanding of uh, IT. IT space is uh, an essential skill, you know, for you to work as a, a competent business analyst. The next but not the least is uh, the techniques. There are a whole range of techniques out there that you need to be familiar with. There are techniques that that apply. Some of the techniques are some of the techniques apply to business and some of the techniques apply to IT. Having a good understanding of all of this will help you to work effectively as a competent uh, business analyst. Now let's really look at uh, the, the career options or look at uh, what's available out there as working as a business analyst. When you train as a BA, when you train as a BA, you are technically training as a generalist. A generalist is someone who can actually work in any, in, on any project. You can work in any, any industry. 
is competent across all areas of business analysis, uses a variety of techniques in an in a initiative of a varying scope and circumstances, found of a various levels of organization. You are found in the various levels of organization. So you are not tied to any particular organization. You can work in any industry, you can work on any project, it doesn't matter. The next one is a specialist. This one possess a solid or advanced subject matter expert. For example, someone like you, uh, for, those people that, for those people who are bankers, I will spend about 10 years or 15 years working in bank, banking. You already have a domain expertise. You are a subject matter expert in that area. You can become a BA specializing in banking. And that's, a, that's kind of a experience that I have. For my entire career life working as a BA, I've only been in the banking sector. I've led in um, implementing so, different type of uh, solutions in different um, area of banking, which includes uh, lending, finance, payment, uh, trade finance. I've done a whole range of this and across different organizations. You can't run short of this. The reason why you know leveraging this is very important is because that is the language you are most familiar with. That is what you have been doing for many years, you know, and um, you can't have any problem. You can't go wrong with it because you already know it anyway. The next one is a hybrid. A hybrid is somebody who is combining, combining two skills. She demonstrates some degree of competencies across a more, a more limited set of knowledge areas or tasks. Require a percentage of a competency in business analysis and some other specific line of a, a business line. For example, when you look at the system development life cycle, I mentioned to you there are several, several people that you know participate in the landscape, including uh, te testers, quality assurance experts, um, developers, um, uh, auditors, and of course a project manager. When you combine any two in this landscape, you are technically a hybrid. You can be a BA QA. You can be a BA PM, you can be a BA um, uh, developer. Anytime you combine two roles within the same development life cycle, you are technically a hybrid. Okay. So, with respect to banking, you can be you are a business analyst, but you want to specialize in lending. And on top of your business analysis, you want to add QA to that. You are a core hybrid. And that is the way I've been working for the past few years. I work as a BA QA and uh, specializing on a particular banking solution. I'll be working on T24 banking solution and I'll be working, I work on so many other banking solutions in the past, but the focus is, the focus is uh, what am I bringing onto the table? And this is where hybrid or specialists in banking become very relevant. and. Uh, so some of the examples of a hybrid and experienced bank that we can talk about include, but not limited, combination of a business analyst and quality assurance, solution architect and business architect, implementation consultant or business same analyst. Now, what are the what are the different uh, types or quality roadmap working as a BA? I've been trained as a BA. You can assume different type of roles. You know, I've mentioned them at the beginning, and some of them are. But not limited to this. You can be a functional analyst even as a BA. You can be a service request analyst. You can be a, an agile business analyst. You can be a system analyst. You can be a business system analyst. You can be a, a business requirement analyst. These are examples of uh, potential area where you can actually function as a business analyst. Now, talking about this uh, for senior folks who are looking at a leadership position. There is no any limit to where you can actually where you can actually reach as a BA. You can get to the position of a director. You can even get to the C level in organizations. It's for you to have an understanding of what it requires for you to move from wherever you are right now and move through the ranks and becoming a leader within that particular industry, within that particular space. Of course, there are a lot of benefits for this working as a BA to organizations. It's been, it's been reported widely that uh, 
having a BA on project has actually helped organization to save a lot of money by reducing the rate of a failure on projects. It ensures organization to deliver success to, to, to deliver projects successfully. On the individual side, even if you are not working as a BA, it's a life skill. If you are not working as a BA, it makes you to be more effective because you have you have a, a very good and a thorough understanding of uh, how to decompose processes, how to analyze problems, and how to provide solutions, how to work as a go between the different solution providers, how to help an organization you know, to deliver on whatever they want. But more importantly, there are more opportunities out there. You have good compensation, of course. Maybe that's the main reason, the main attraction for many people. A good compensation, an average of $50 per hour, I think is a modest income. And if you're looking for a full-time job, you could be thinking about uh, an average of a 70k. People make as much as uh, over 100 k, you know, per annum. Now, other reasons, you know, I mean, other reasons uh, for the rise in the demand for BAs. I've just mentioned the issue of a failure. Why are most projects regarded as failure, or when would a project be regarded as failure? When you are not delivering according to the visa requirements, the project will technically be described as a failure. Some of the reasons why some of the some of the some of the factors that had been identified based on statistics is around requirement. If you look at what I have on my screen here, or talking about the unrealistic expectation, expectation is about requirement, lack of resources that is by the side, technology incompetence, but lack of executive support on unrealistic expectation and change or incomplete requirements and specifications those constitute a very high chunk of uh, the reason why many projects are failing lack of a user input when you don't have a user input on realistic expectation and a lack of executive support and uh, incomplete requirements all these put together can constitute a higher part i mean a very big percentage of uh, the reason why projects is, is actually failing in order to avert unnecessary failure, many organizations thought, you know, having a BA is the way to go. And I, agree, and I totally agree that it is the way to go because I can share my personal experience. You know, working as a BA, working as a go between, because, uh, between the business and uh, the solution provider, being able to speak the language of uh, the business and uh, speaking the language of uh, the, uh, the solution provider has helped me personally and has helped the organization and helped in delivering on most projects that I've worked on. Now, talking about strategies, what strategy do we have? What strategy is, is available here? I've mentioned to you there are three, there are three building blocks. The three building blocks will represent the strategy that we're going to adopt. The first building block is the domain area. Your domain area is banking and finance or accounting. You can fill in anything that you do into that space. That's the domain area. The second one is framework and the third one is technology. So why is domain area a pathway? Leverage your banking experience. Your banking experience is so huge that um, there is no way any organize, any IT professional can actually implement a banking solution without a strong collaboration with a banker. If you see any solution that is out there that is being used, whether it's Bank, bank Master or Finacu or Flexcube or whatever it is, all these solutions are developed in collaboration with uh, experts in the industry. We well, are talking about uh, bankers, not IT professionals. So in order to deliver this project, in order to support this project, in order to implement this project, of course, bankers will still be required because they are the only one who can actually, um, who actually, who, who actually understood what has actually gone into that solution. So leveraging your domain area, I think is number, my own number one, um, um, option and a recommendation to anybody that's actually coming to this space as a banker. The next one is a technology. There are many folks out there that um, they have a little bit of IT or they have worked briefly. They are not, they are not uh, trained as a computer scientist. They are not um, IT professional. They don't have any formal training in IT. But then they have worked with the solutions. You can actually leverage your understanding of technology. I'm very sure most bankers are participated in the implementation of banking solution in the past. Just that most of the time we just say, oh, I only, I only tested, but it's beyond testing. So being part of a project, being part of a, an IT project in the bank, 
can actually be part of what they're going to use, you know, as a as a as a as a banker that tries to transition into business analysis. So just cast your mind to any time you have worked in the, any project you have worked on in the past, whether you work in lending, they're implementing a lending solution, they're implementing a reconciliation software, they're implementing a risk solution, they are in, whatever it is that they are doing in the bank that you have been involved and it has some touch of a technology, this will be relevant. But you will you you can only leverage this pathway if you are you are a core, you are a technical person. If you are an IT person, because a lot of IT people are actually coming to BA as well, just for your information. A lot of people who are trained as who are IT professional, network engineers, because their jobs are moving to the cloud, they are equally coming to BA. So those people can actually take this part. Okay. So for those of us who are bankers who have worked on a project on a, you know IT project in the, in the in the in the past, we can actually have a combination of uh, our domain expertise and technology to move us forward to become an effective BA. The next one, but not the least, is uh, a best practice pathway. Even when you are not working as even when you are not working on projects, many of us have gone some some of this training. I just in domain area we're talking about traditional banking, best practice in, in banking. I uh, will use um, you know SAP. SAP banking is a very good reference point of let's keep. I would love to use you know a package. I mean a, a solution. Uh, a commercial off the shelf application like a flex cube or SAP because all the solutions they have gone through a lot of uh, a lot of development. They have uh, leveraged the expertise of several people all over the whole place in order to you know develop the solution. Using that documentation, using you know your experience with um, with those solutions can actually help you to move forward as a BA. But what is more important for me, as far as the best practice is concerned here, is a look at a vendor best practice. There are best practices in Agile, best practice in Oracle, best practice in SAP. All these vendors, they have their own best practice in terms of how they implement their own solution. OK? So questions. I've had people, people have asked me this question many times. What do we do on a day-to-day -day basis? I just want to use the framework of a, um, a system development cycle processes to just explain to you to what, what we do. Apart from uh, using IBA uh, knowledge areas, which uh, consist of uh, elicitation, recommend analysis, modeling, solution evaluation, planning, and monitoring, we use that to work within the system development life cycle where you have things like a business process architecture. What's business process architecture? Many of us have been involved in writing statement of statement of operating procedure. Many of us have been involved in writing a user guide. Many of us have been involved in a writing, you know, user manual in organizations. All of these put together constitute what we fit in into your business process architecture. Without the business process architecture in place, it's almost impossible for you to do a good job, you know, guarding your requirements. How do tell people leverage your existing documentation? And one of the existing documentation you can have is a, is that is a business process architecture or, sta or statement of operating procedure. So what do we do? You create a lot of documents. That's what we do. We do create documents. We work with business to identify their requirements and document their requirements. We, we compile this requirement and map the requirement to solutions. We work with solution developer, the developer. I mean, we work with developers to ensure that um, their design is uh, actually matching with what we have documented. We work throughout the end. We work with different you know, uh, team members within the system development life cycle up to go live. In actual fact, a BA is expected to actually lead a go live um, engagement in terms of a testing, performing a UAT. Okay, these are some of the things that we do as BA. The other thing, what are other thing I want to quickly just say, let us know. I won't say that said all of these things. What is the what is the roadmap? How can I how can I embark on uh, this journey? What kind of training can I take? This is your suggestion. Apart from going for a formal, you know, functional um, fundament, fundamentals of BA, these are some specific areas that you can actually look at. In terms of framework, have a firm understanding of uh, the IIBA framework. It's called BABOC. You know, get into agile environment, have an understanding of uh, what agile is all about. Look at, uh, you know, what's available with other best, I mean, um, with other vendors like OUM is uh, Oracle Unified Method, uh, modeling tools, 
have an understanding, you know, sharpen your skill in facilitation and uh, interpersonal skills. On the IT side, have a fair understanding of uh, IT, you know, uh, embark on this journey. It's, the truth of the matter is in today's world, we can see if with this coronavirus thing, all of us are locked down in our, in our homes, we can't do anything. IT is the way to go. If you're not embracing it, now, I don't know, it's like somebody trying to defy, I mean, uh, <laughs> defy the evil days, so to say. So we need to find, find a structured approach by which we can actually move in to learn what we enable able to work effectively. And in terms of technology, look at the IT foundations, basic IT foundational courses, look at the quality assurance, look at the basic uh, database concept, look at the IT service management, look at the software project management, all of these are examples of things you can actually, you know, uh, embark upon, and that will enrich your language. It will enable you to now be able to speak a better IT language than many other people. Please don't, don't forget, even the last one that I just have here is the Office application. Office application is very important. Microsoft Office. Many of us claim to know Microsoft Word, but the truth of the matter is that uh, we are even less than a beginner in a Microsoft Word. So please, all of these tools, they are called productivity tools. It's very important for us to just get familiar with them. You know, do whatever you can do to learn them and that will help you to do an effective job working as a BA. Perhaps you're already a BA and working in that space and you are struggling with a few things, you may want to consider, you know, some advanced training. And I'm making a suggestion here, model advanced BA training will include things like uh, do some deliberately go into ERP and become a subject matter and become an expert in that technology or go into agile you know go through the entire process you can become a a spock a spock is a subject matter i mean it's a spock is a scrum a product uh, owner certification you can be an smc that's a scrum master you can be you know please consider vendors certification that will help you in terms of framework on the IT side, on the IT side, I, I, I look at uh, things like SQL, basic SQL. We're not saying you should become a, a programmer at this point, but have an understanding of uh, this basic language. You know, know what business intelligence is all about. Know how you can actually go there, even if it's just foundational part of it. That is going to help you a great deal to be able to move forward even to the next level. The other one, last one I just have there, just suggestion here, business process management. You know, there's so many tools that are available out there that can actually help us in this capacity. Okay, so this is a, this is where I, I've come to the end of the presentation. I believe we have a lot of questions and I hope we have enough time to take um, as many questions as we can. I'm just going to hand over to now Jacob. Thank you very, very much, uh, Mr. Sam. I tell you, it's, it's been quite an eye opener. Uh, without a doubt, I'm sure a lot of the participants here will agree that you have unlocked um, a new door and it's given them a different perspectives on how to look at BA and hopefully take advantage and explore the field. And uh, I also have uh, quite a number of persons who um, are already wanting to ask questions. And then we also have some folks uh, just before we go to the Q&A session, I'd like to let all our participants know, especially those in Canada, that um, the CIBN Canada branch is up and running. I mean, um, they are the ones who have sponsored tonight's webinar. And you can come on board. It's pretty easy process. Um, right now, we're going to be having the how to join the Canada branch of CIBN for all those who are interested, especially for our banking colleagues um, from Nigeria who are currently here. Um, we will be popping up uh, the directions on how to come on board. Once you see that, all you need to do is follow the instructions there and it's pretty easy to come on board. Uh, while we're waiting for that to pop in, I also want to let us know that after the Q&A session, um, we have also thought about the idea of letting our participants um, let us know what area of career uh, management they want us to focus on. Okay, so 
at the end of the Q&A session, we're popping up some um, specific career areas like project management, compliance, and all we need for you to do, it's a poll, you just click on what areas you would like us to focus on next. At the end of the QA session, that will be popping up. Um, okay, while we're still waiting for that, what we'll just do now is take a couple of um, questions that have come in, and then I have also observed that some of our participants have their hands raised. And like I said uh, at the beginning, we will take the questions that have been typed in, and afterwards we will uh, give audience to uh, participants who have their hands raised. Uh, Mr. Sam, I have a question here for you. Um, the first question is from Eric Barrow. And Eric is saying that, okay, I'll, re I'll, re I'll read it without, um, you know, as it's presented here. I am in, I'm new to Canada. I have over 13 years banking experience through retail, commercial, corporate, and branch management. Um, would you advise that I do a master a master's in finance here, or I take a business analysis professional um, certification or qualification? I am actually at a crossroad. That question is from Eric. You want to respond to that, sir? That's a very good question. Uh, I get that all the time. Uh, what, what I will personally want to recommend is just go for BA um, straight away, and I will give you some explanation. There is um, if you go for a master degree, that's going to take you another two years. Depending, if you are doing it on full time, look at the cost of uh, the master degree and then look at uh, the cost, as you say, as, as look at uh, the opportunity cost. <laughs> you find out that at the end of the day, it's a lot more money that you are spending going for a master degree than going for a BA. If you are doing a BA program, at the very, very best in any in any college it, it's a, it can't take you more than six months in other in actual fact we have a lot of training program all around that run for just about a you know two months and uh, with appropriate guidance and a mentorship and a coaching from uh, a very good trainer i believe you can actually have a breakthrough what we need the most in this part of the world is not another degree another another qualification in terms of um credentials what we need is we need somebody we need a mentor. We need appropriate training that is required in the industry. Nobody, I have a two master degree, nobody ever asked for my certificate in all my jobs. So that's good to be myself. I would say simply, you know, please go just embark, find a very good institution, a very good institution, a very good training, uh, tra um, uh, be a training provider, you know, sign up with them. Ensure that some of the things that I've highlighted here in terms of training suggestion uh, are called out in some of those training. Because you may embark on a training program that um, at the end of the day is not going to be worth what your why. I hope I answered that question. <laughs> Thank you very much, Mr. Sam. Um, I have another one here. It says, "Can it's from Muibat and Nipo will share. I hope I got that pronunciation correctly. Please forgive Nipo me if I didn't pronounce it well. Um, can an economist be a business analyst? Absolutely. Anyone can be a business analyst. Anyone at all, anyone can be a business analyst. So the, the point is that um, um, when you say you're an economist, of course you have been doing something in the past. Even if even even all that you have been doing is a research in economics, it's still relevant. Just think about automation, think about um, think about uh, the your domain area, the businesses that are associated with what you are working on. And consider some of the skills that you already acquired over a period of time. Those skills are what we try as much as to help uh, folks to translate to business, uh, business analysis. You notice that I listed quite a whole range of things there, and I'm very sure if it's possible, they will put uh, econometrics. They will put some other, you know, some economic uh, uh, stuff there. So anybody can be even a uh, anybody can be um, a BA. That's just my, my point. Anybody, it's just about the, your determination. How hungry are you? How desperate are you? Of what relevant, of what relevant is, um, of, of, of what important is this particular thing to you? 
don't come into BA. What I'm just going to warn people is that uh, if you don't have any passion for it, if you don't have some of those competencies that we just highlighted, if you don't have, um, if you are coming into this space because of, uh, oh, they are paying them a lot of money, I, I, I want you to seriously reconsider it. Okay? So economic, an economist can actually become a BA. Thank you very much, sir. <laughs> The, I, I would like to add that the money is very attractive too. <laughs> but that's on a lighter note. Um, for for all those who are, uh, just before I take um, questions from our audience who would want to ask um, in person, I'd like us to know that all the information you need to become a member of the Canada branch is currently on our chat session. So if you're on your computer or on your phone, just click on the chat session and you will see all the information there. Okay, thank you very much. It's also on the slide page on how you can contact us here in um, Canada. Um, I have a couple of people with their hands raised that I would like us to take questions from. I have um, Juliet An Anyaoha. Forgive my pronunciation, please. I'm going to... Oh, okay, Juliet has... Um... Okay, Juliet is back. She went offline briefly. I'm Juliet, I'm going to unmute you at the moment and I'll give you the permission to ask uh, Mr. Sam directly. Thank you. Juliet, you can unmute yourself. Okay, go ahead. Okay, hello everyone. Hi. Okay, I would start by thanking Mr. Samuel for his time. This section is really informative, like it's opened my eyes to a lot of things that I couldn't have considered I did in the past I can relate to as business analysis rule. Okay, for me, I have a background in customer service in one of the leading banks in Nigeria. And now I'm coming to trans, I'm transiting to the, to the BA um, profession. One, my first question is, I don't know how to come up based on what the project he has listed from the operations part. I can't really relate. What I was, what I did in the past was like an end user that we tried to um, test to check the functionalities of some of the applications we used in our as in customer service. And if I go for an interview here, I don't know how to really present it. Like I don't know how to really talk confidently to say yes, this is what I did over 10 years. Then the second one I have, I ha the second question is, I love this BA. In fact, I'm very passionate about it, but my problem is the facilitation skill, which is one of the key things that you need to excel in this area. So how do I really, how do I develop myself really to position me to this comp in this competitive market? Thank you. Okay, uh, I think the first question on um, being a customer, a customer reps, or you, you, if you, if you, if you cast your mind back to um, the banking as application that you were using, you notice that uh, you do your KYC, you do AML, you do PEP, you do so many things on that system, right? You know, the way I want you to just picture, picture yourself is uh, look at what we're doing. Look at the processes around your area. In CRM, it's all about a uh, customer engagement, nothing more than that. You know, you are the very first point of call when the customer comes to the bank. So what you do, you do all the due diligence. There is, that's it, there's a process in place in most bank. And I'm very sure your bank is not an exception. But in terms of technology, what you may not be able to explain easily is that uh, there is what we call CRM. CRM is Customer Relationship Management Solution. It's out there. Many banks are now implementing it. And for banks, for banks who did not implement this, it's actually a module within the banking solution. There is no way you can actually do an effective, you know, customer relationship management, even in the banking environment, without having that module there. Is for you to identify the solution that you work on. Let's assume that you work with Finacu or you work with Flexcube or you work with uh, Bankmaster, you work with uh, any of those banking solutions. I'm telling you, there's always a model. So what you need to do is get in touch with people 
who probably have more experience in the banking solution, who can actually tell you the name of what you are actually working on at that time. The second thing is that uh, cast your mind, look at uh, the statement of operating procedure around your operations. You know, they will give you a user guide or they give you a user manual or whatever they call it. Or there will be a policy within the bank on how accounts are operated. What you need to do when you see a PEP, what you need to do when you see you to do a, a KYC. All of those things are skills that really need to translate, you know, and that's what you are bringing to your BA. On your second question on facilitation skill, please note that uh, communication is not only about uh, standing and uh, talking to people, right? But it's about how you engage your audience, how you are able to exchange information, and uh, and the, whoever is receiving it is actually comprehending what you are, what you are, what you are, what you are, what you are passing across. So I have worked in um, in this space for as well as that, in my past few in, in the past uh, few projects that I worked on. I don't even I don't even do any facilitation. I don't do what I've been doing is uh, I focus more on um, on reviewing the business requirement that was prepared by another person or engaging the business to identify and I do a lot of a mapping of a requirement to solution. So in mapping requirement to solution, you don't do any facilitation. So if for you to have an understanding of uh, the entire system development life cycle and know what is deliverable at this stage and know how the kind of support you can actually provide. But coming to addressing the, this challenge of a facilitation, anybody can talk. The important thing is that uh, you should know what, what you can talk, I mean, what, what to talk about. Getting yourself prepared, getting relevant books and uh, knowing what is involved. is can be, you know, it's gonna be a form of training. No, learn more about workshop, learn more about it. If you attend a good training school, they will teach you what to really, I mean, the kind of skills or how to go about, uh, you know, mastering the art of uh, facilitating. So it's something that, uh, that's not a big deal. The, the most important thing is what you just mentioned in between, you said you are passionate about BA. If you are passionate about anything, I'm telling you, nothing can stop you. But when you're not passionate about it, then you can struggle, you will struggle with it. And you know, time you give it up. Okay. I hope that's good. I hope that response is helpful a little bit. Thank you very Thank much, you. Um, Mr. Sam. And I'll quickly want to just add um, to the last person that asked the question. Um, I can tell you, you are in safe hands. It's a good thing that we know that you're, you were a banker in Nigeria. So please just go to the chat session. Um, ensure you register as a member with us in Canada. and given that you're passionate about it and it's an area you want to explore, um, I can assure you that whatever possible way that we can help you get to that um, dream or bring that dream to realization, we're going to help you do that. And for all other attendees, I would also like you to know that if you're having this same challenge, just go ahead, register as a member and connect with us. Together, we want to build a new the level of progress for every member here in Canada. Thank you so much. Um, a quick one, I'll let um, Mr. Akin Morakinyo um, to please unmute himself and um, you, have my, you have permission to go ahead and speak. Thank you very much. And I'd like to congratulate the CIBN Canada branch for this landmark groundbreaking informative and educative program. And I'd like to thank uh, Mr. Sam for that insightful presentation. Uh, I must confess I'm logging on from Nigeria. It's 1 a.m. now, midnight, but it's been a worthwhile eye-opening session. And so my question is this. We have people here in Nigeria, haven't listened to you. I've got two other people listening with me here and uh, we're excited about this and would like to join the train. Now, uh, since BA is the go between the business and technology, can CIBN Canada branch also facilitate Nigerians here who would like to uh, come on board this profession and that's my question uh, just to add that uh, i'm the group head membership services of cibn thank you pause 
of course, we should, we should, I mean, technology makes things uh, very, very easy, even if you want to come to Nigeria. I'm, I'm just more than happy with what is actually happening in this space. I'm, I'm so excited about uh, the energy that we have. We have uh, the group of people that are actually running this uh, ESCO thing, um, uh, starting with uh, Mary, to every one of us. I think the the, uh, the energy is so is so infectious, so to say. So we'll be more than happy to, you know, uh, we can discuss it at, the, at our own at our own uh, ESCO level here, and uh, see how we can actually, you know, work with you. But that, of course, is something that uh, is doable. No any problem about that. Thank you very much, um, Mr. Sam. And uh, I think for me personally, we're very excited. Um, you know, coming from the office in Nigeria, I'm sure, like you rightly said, we'll be more than willing to work um, with them. I, I have one more hand being raised here. Um, Oyela Yo Ade Konye. And once again, I'd like to apologize for everyone that I probably have not been pronouncing your names properly. Please forgive me. Um, Oyela Yo, you have the floor. Please go ahead with your question. Oyela Yo Ade Konye. Um, okay, at the moment, what's, what's, um, Oyela, you please go ahead and unmute your mic, and then we should be able to hear you. Okay, it's saying your, your mic is unmuted. Um, all right, what we'll do next, we have Chioma Nwokolo on the line. Um, Chioma, okay, Oyela, let's take Chioma's question, and then we'll come straight back to you, okay? Thank you. Okay. Good, good evening. Yeah. Good evening. Okay. Thank you very much for for this uh, enlightenment. Um, business analysis has been so confusing to me. But let me just go straight to my question. My question is a bit similar similar to Eric's own. Um, all I did, I never did operation. All I did in banking was marketing. For the 15 years I was there up to branch leadership for so many years. And then while you were, I didn't have a banking background. I had science background. So, but while you were talking, I didn't see the connection between marketing and the business analysis, the kind of, what kind of problem will, will what kind of problem will be generated that we need a business analyst, you know? I understand um, operations, but the marketing is basically engaging the customers. Are they going to get a system? I don't understand what kind of problem that I'll be solving as a business analyst with my background, except otherwise I changed totally to maybe credit lending operations, which I wasn't even in operations. I was in the marketing point, a point of marketing end of lending, talking to the customers, appraising the customers, and then submitting to um, risk, credit risk department to for further processing. You know, thank you. That's a that's a very very good question. And uh, in actual fact, you are the first BA. <laughs> let me let me explain that to you. Okay. You have been engaging the customer. I, I remember many times I've worked with um, in marketing. When you are going after all these uh, high net worth individual or those uh, blue chip companies like uh, Lever Brothers or Cadbury or on all those big big com companies, what do you do? You go out there to meet the chief executive, you know, with the hope of uh, getting the account, isn't it? And oftentimes they will tell you, they will tell you a whole range of things that they want you to do for them. Let me give you some specific example. You may not be exact, you may not, you may not have that experience. I remember at one time we follow, we follow one of our market, marketers to, I think it was a uh, Lever Brother. I can't remember which, which of the organization. They wanted the solution, check print. You know, they do, they issue a lot of check to their, they issue check to all their vendors. Maybe on a daily basis, maybe they issue up to about, I don't know, maybe 100 or 500, I don't know many checks. So they want the bank to take responsibility of issuing that check. So that was the business. So what do we need to do? Is the marketer that uh, collect all the requirements, what the business want, and they pass it on to IT department. 
So the marketer is actually technically a B in that capacity. Can you see what can you see where we're coming from? So unless we are saying that uh, oh all that all that I do is uh, going after the politicians and just getting money from them. But even at that, it's about customer relationship management. Marketing, anytime we talk about marketing, unfortunately, I didn't I didn't flag, I didn't show that in the in the in the business process. Uh, I think I took that one off. In marketing, there are three elements, there are three things that are involved. We call it marketing, please for, for, the, for this minute, just think about marketing as a CRM, customer relationship management. And in this area, we have three three core modules. One, sales operations, marketing management, and uh, even lead management is part of it. We have service management, marketing management, and uh, sales operations. All of these are components of a marketing. Many organizations are looking for experts. They are looking for BA who have mastery of uh, these areas. And you can find them. You don't have to even look. You, can, you don't have to even look in the bank. They are all over the whole of uh, you know communication. Tell us, you know, Bell. All those organizations. Any organization where you have uh, people picking up the call and uh, recording things, they have a CRM behind the door and behind them. So that is what you are. So what you should be focusing on as a as a as a marketing expert in the bank. Or uh, having work as a market, marketer in the bank is look at the solution. The focus should be the solution. After you have looked at your process, look at the, a, a solution that will match that will match that. The solution that is out there for marketer is called CRM. In today's world, we have things like a Salesforce market uh, CRM. We have a Microsoft Dynamics CRM. We have a Cibo CRM. We have a SAP CRM. We have all these CRM solution all over the whole places, right? So. You, you don't have any you don't have any problem at all all you need to do is uh, have a mastery you already have banking in actual fact even the fact that you work in the bank you have some experience in banking anyway even though you think you are only doing you are only doing marketing all right so but you have an established expertise in a marketing and those three modules that i just mentioned to you those three core processes in marketing bear that bear that in mind number one sales operations marketing operation and the service management all of these things are what constitutes marketing you may not be doing the entire thing back in back home but that is what marketing is all about anytime you are looking for a job here and anytime you are looking for a job here and they say they are looking for a crm that's what they're looking for i hope i've been able to answer that question a little bit thank you thank you very much uh, if, you, if you have another question if, if that is not sufficient just feel free to to reach out, you know, and that's the reason why we have uh, the the branch. You can reach out, reach out to us in the branch, and hopefully we are trying to set up, a, you know, a, a quality virtual office, <laughs> why why we can actually be in the office on a specific day of the week, and uh, we can get uh, we can we can take call to clarify issues with people. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Sam, uh, for all the responses, and we want to thank everyone that has also um, asked. There are questions. Um, just before we um, round off this program, I just want us to know again that the information that you need to become a member of the Canadian branch, it's there on your chat. I mean, we'll be excited to have you. And like Mr. Sam said, we are in the process of opening up a virtual office where we can um, help guide our members here in Canada on how to go into various fields of endeavor that they may be looking um, to go into. And because this is a first of a series, this is not just one off series uh, or one off program. We would like to bring up a poll right now um, and we want our participants to please let us know which other area um, of the of career series that they would want you know, us to present in our next um, program. Um, the, the poll is up on your screen now. And these are areas that as a, as a former banker that you can explore within the canadian space and we would just like you to click on it it will be up there for a few seconds and um with that we, it will help in our planning process as well and please don't forget all the information you need to become a member is right there on the chat session you have you still have uh, a few more seconds to go ahead and click on the area of focus um, and then would uh, you know take the closing remarks and that will be all for today. For those persons who may still have questions, um, please, what I'd suggest is we're practically out of time. We will need to 
close this session. So what I would suggest is please go ahead, click on the membership, register with us, and then from there we'll be able to address all other issues um, that may be coming up. Thank you very much. Um, Mr. Sam, I just want to use this opportunity first to thank you for taking um, time out of your busy schedule to anchor the session today. And secondly, I'd like to thank all of our participants. Um, today's session would not have been possible without you. You made it what um, you know. You made it, made it what a while. We want to thank you so much for attending, and I also want to thank um, those that joined us from Nigeria. Thank you so so much. We're looking forward to working with you. Um, we also want to thank the entire executive members of CIBN Canada branch. Um, you have done an excellent job. Uh, I know that with this, we're going to be having. We have, we have, um, by our own selves, we have, you know, made the stakes very high, and uh, I'm sure we are ready to take on whatever uh, comes our way going forward. Um, ladies and gentlemen, I would like again to thank every one of you and to thank you, Mr. Sam, for coming. And uh, all I can say is have a wonderful evening. God bless you. See you in our next series, which is going to be coming up very soon. The information will be passed across. And then we will see you again to brainstorm on how we can explore the Canadian market and take advantage of all of the opportunities that are there. Thank you so much for joining and God bless you.